before we get started, just make sure that you guys either sign in with this QR code or the link in the description. All you have to do is sign in with that link and it lets us know it goes through our referral. So it just basically adds another person that's done it through a referral. It really helps the club and our school. So uh, please do that. Thank you. Also, guys, just a reminder that the IBM Z online career fair is going to be coming up soon. Uh, we have the dates on screen. And um, if you're a Western student, it's going to be April 12th. And just know that you need to get your Explore badge, uh, just the concepts. So, you know, keep doing that. And uh, we hope to see you there. All right. Now we are going to be doing the Rex module of Explore. All right. So before we get started, um, I'm sure most of you probably have not heard of Rex. Very high level language. It's I think if you were to show it to somebody who doesn't know how to program, they would probably be able to tell you roughly what the program does. It's used for things like processing data, generating reports, and automating repetitive tasks like typical mainframe stuff. And it's also known for its ease of learning and readability, very accessible to everybody. And it's commonly used on mainframe systems, but also has implementations for other platforms. Um, so yeah, let's get into the module. Um, so first we have to install the Zoe command line interface. So far we've done um, the Zoe VS Code extension. Um, and we've done Unix system services. This is just another way to talk to the mainframe. <coughs> so you need to install it for Mac OS and for Windows. There are different installations. Um, so check explore, check the explore slides. And um, if, if you need to copy this, it'll, it's all in explore. All right. So first things first, I'm on Windows. So I'm going to be doing the Windows one. Uh, when you open up a terminal in VS Code, you can see it opens PowerShell. We want uh, command line. So type CMD, it switches to command line. You can see this thing switched over here. Uh, we're now in the command line interface. Um, and we are going to install the Zoe command line interface. So NPM is a node package manager. If you guys have used um, JavaScript frameworks for whatever, you, pro you probably know what this is. You have to install Node.js in the first uh, module. And it's just a very useful tool for installing packages from the web. Um, so you can see once we do that, it's installing. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay, perfect. I already had it, so uh, you can see they made. I guess made an update. They removed a package, but um, yeah. So you guys, you guys will see if the full thing got installed. Uh, to switch to the Zoe command line interface, we just type Zoe, and you can see that um, it just it's welcome to the Zoe command line interface with a bunch of commands. Uh, we're only going to get into a few of them today. But uh, yeah, let's get started. So um, we'll move on to the next step. So first things first, let's do a high level query on our um, on our data sets. So whichever one you guys, whatever you guys are using, uh, do the your user ID and then all the public data sets here. Enter. And then um, we're going to go into our source file. So source is where all of the uh, public source code is. If you guys remember from JCL, that's where the COBOL code is. So let's find our source. Oh, we're, we're looking for the public one. Source. OK. So we're looking for two programs, um, guess num and some Rex. So guess num is here. Actually, I don't want to show you guys the code. I don't want to spoil it, um, but yeah. So we can see we have these. All we want to do is copy guess num into our own source. So we're going to go to our user ID and then paste it into source. Don't change the name. Just keep the name the same when it asks you. Um, and then start copying this one. And then op uh, open this up and make sure that you guys have these in your data set so we can access them through the Zoe command line interface later. Uh, so we need to execute the following command. Um, Zoe profiles create, and then we're creating a time sharing option profile. So it's really important here that you guys, when you do TSO dash profile, we're going to get into what this means in a second, but you guys have to use, um, the name of your data set. So mine is WCS workshops. I think the default one is Z explorer, like the one that they tell you to use. Um, and you'll be able to fix it. I'll show you guys how to fix it if it messes up. But, uh, you know, nobody wants to do that. So 
you can see we started off with Zoe and we're creating a time sharing profile under these set of data sets. So let's enter. And um, yeah, it's saying that profiles created deprecated. I'm pretty sure that's just because the explore slides are out of date. Um, if you guys want to do some experimenting and see if you can find um, in the documentation what you should actually be using. But, you know, it's all right because it created the account anyway. We can see the attributes here. So let's move on to part two or part three. Um, so let's make sure that we have our profile set as defaults so that when we open Zoe, we can it, it just automatically defaults to this. So we need to enter two commands this time. Um, Zoe profiles. Set default the OSMF and then just our profile, right? So this one just sets our default Zoe profile to our uh, our data sets, and then um, we got the same deprecated warning. Don't worry about that. And then the next one is just for the time sharing profile. So TSO. So our time sharing options profile set to WCS workshops as well. Um, and then this is where if you guys messed up, so you'll be able to tell if you messed up once we get into it and stuff starts not working. All you have to do is type Zoe profiles delete that will get rid of everything. And then all you have to do is go back to this step and um, you know, go to step three, step one, but skip this step. Please do not type this. Please, please, please do not type this if nothing happens. Okay. All right. On to step four. So now we get to run our first uh, Rex code. So let's type in this command. We're gonna do Zoe time sharing option, and we're gonna issue the command execute um, our user ID. So four one source, and then this is literally just the file that we copied over. So we just want to execute the file that we copied over into our source. So make sure you guys. Um, dash dash double dash SSM and if we execute it you can see we got greetings from Rex Wow how nice um, so that's pretty cool let's take a look at the source code um, of some Rex so I mean there's not much to look at I guess but this is an example of how simple it is there's like really no syntax at all uh, you literally just say space and then whatever you want to say pretty cool in my opinion um, definitely want to do some more stuff with this but uh, yeah now we're going to run an interactive rec server now this is probably more practical because you there 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 aren't very many I feel like it'd be more um, interactive than one-offs like that so what we want to do is create a server address space to start and run the Rex command until we are finished okay so what an address space is, is it's essentially a space in memory on the mainframe where you're allowed to will use the memory right you can uh, what whatever you're whatever you're doing it's running on the mainframe and it stays up running so we're gonna say Zoe time sharing options start address space and then you can see we got this key so we do need this key for later so I would copy it and put it in your notes or just like um, don't clear your terminal so you can scroll back up to it but yeah make sure you keep this key um, like I said here uh, yeah, let's call it my address space key just for the next few steps. Um, so let's run the same REST program that we did before, but we're going to direct the output to the address space. So I'll show you guys what that means, but let's just execute the command. So, so let's type out the command Zoe time sharing option send as, and then, so we're going to send to the address space. Uh, our key so we're telling it where we want it to send data execute and then we're just executing the exact same file for now uh, we're gonna get to do something cooler in a second but um, let's just do this all right so you may be thinking like what even was that this is the exact same thing as I just did why are you showing me this well it's important that you know what a time sharing option is. It's another way that uh, ZOS allows users to get data sets, run programs, and look at output. 
it's basically just the command line interface for ZOS. So when you send, uh, if you guys get into the extended modules, you get to do the green screen stuff that um, all the old mainframers, not old, we'll say, um, well, I don't know what else to say, but uh, they all like that stuff. It's like, it's like terminal. And essentially, whenever we um, send a command by right clicking and clicking copy and we copy a data set in, v uh, in VS Code, what it's doing, it's converting it into uh, a command that is understood by the green screen, the ISPF terminal in the ZOS. So if you guys are interested in that, do it, do this, do advanced, and then get into that, and you actually get access to it for a limited amount of time. It's very interesting. But yeah, it's um, while so a time sharing option, like I said, just a command line interface for ZOS. And while the address space is active, we're allowed to use system memory, like. Think about like a mainframe. Like um, I don't know how much I don't know how much RAM it has. I think it's like four terabytes on the whatever Z15. That might be wrong, but um, you you have like an, a massive amount of memory that you can use. So we don't get to uh, experiment with it that much. But um, we're about to show. I'm about to show you guys an example. So let's. I'm just gonna. If you press the up arrow in terminal, it'll show your most recent command. And all we're doing is changing the file. If you guys remember, we did two files up here guess num and some rex so this one we're going to do is guess num um so make sure you guys have your key in here and have it ready to execute we're going to execute it here and all right he's thinking of a number between one and ten what is your guess okay before we do that i just want to look at the code um so this is it's it's a really good example of how simple uh rex is it's saying what it wants to do. It picks a random number and it gives us one try. Um, no, it, it doesn't give us one try. It starts us out at one try. And this is just a do while loop. It does it while our guest is, is not whatever number was selected. Um, it pulls it. So whatever we type here, it pulls the input. And then if it does not equal secret, it adds a try. Okay, so this code is super simple. You could probably do some really cool stuff really easily with it if you wanted to experiment. So you could come into this file if you wanted and mess around. That's what I did. Um, so you guys should too, definitely. But uh, yeah, let's let's start guessing the number. So to guess the number, we get to execute Zoe TSO send address space, and then we're using our key. So we're sending to this address space here that is defined by this key, like I said, dash dash data, and instead of doing execute, since we already have something running on the um, on the on the address space all we're doing is our guess so let's say I want to guess um, I don't know three if I get it first then uh, you guys have to like and subscribe so let's see um, but yeah basically since this is already running in the address space the next data we send will be actually retrieved by it it will be pulled as you can see up here dang okay uh, let's, let's let's go again oh Okay, see that's that's kind of crazy. I think I should still get a I think I should still get a like and subscribe for that. But um yeah, I mean that that's pretty much it for the Rex module. Um it was sort of just a, another way. It was it wasn't as much about Rex the language as it was about showing you guys another way to interact with the ZOS. So this we're getting closer and closer to the actual ISPF. And if you guys want to do that, you got to finish advanced and unlock extended. So, um, yeah, let me know if you guys need help with anything. Um, but you know the drill. We have to submit the validation job, check Rex. So let's go to zxp.public.jcl and check. Where is it? A, B, C, D. All right, there it is. Um, check Rex 1. So this is Rex 1 submit the job and then let's it's active right now oh beautiful we got a code of zero 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 so what that means is that we got it right zero 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 return code zero 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 is what you want to see in jcl so we're going to be back and explore take you to the rex one dot pdf and um like always uh the slides that we're going through are taken. Okay, this is supposed to say 10 to 12, um, but you can see the steps here, 9 to 11, and we're actually going through the steps um, 
we just take the, the key points. But if you guys are interested in this, interested in another form of uh, CLI and also for the installation, definitely check out the Explore slides. But uh, now that we're complete, we can check the JCL. So. All right, there it goes. Um, so yeah, that's everything. Now that you've done this, you have unlocked officially the wrap up module. So that's the next video. Make sure you check that out. It's it's like probably easily the most fun one that we do just because uh, you actually get to write a Python script that interacts with data sets on the mainframe uh, using a library by IBM. So um, make sure you and it's also the last one before you get your badge, so don't quit now. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.